Hi, this is Rudy Scarfalato again in our next of our series of videos on the anatomy and physiology program that we have here at ASHA. And in this presentation, we are going to be looking at the skeletal system. And the skeletal system consists of the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton is what we commonly recognize as the skull, the spine or vertebral column, and the rib cage, and basically consists of small, tightly fitted bones. Look at the skull, for example. It consists of 29 bones. Most of them are fitted very tightly together. The one exception is this bone right here. This is the mandible or lower jaw, which you can feel on yourself. It forms the only freely movable joint in the skull. That joint is right here, directly in front of your ear canal. You can feel it. If you put your finger in front of your ear canal and move your jaw up and down, you can feel your temporomandibular joint. It's a very important joint. And in the neuromuscular class that we teach here at ASHA, uh, we look at that joint very closely and you'll learn how to work the muscles that operate that joint. And you'll also learn how to analyze and assess the condition of that joint, which you can actually learn how to do very simply. Again, if you put your fingers on that joint in front of your ear canal and move your jaw up and down. It should move down very freely in a vertical direction with no side to side movement or no popping and grinding. If you're getting any of those things, it tells you that you have a temporomandibular joint problem or a TMJ problem. Um, so that's, that's the skull and then you have the vertebral column and the ribs. The vertebral column or the spine consists of 26 bones. The top 24 bones are called vertebrae, and the bottom two bones are called the sacrum and the coccyx. Um, and then connected to the spine, you have the rib cage here. We have 12 pairs of ribs, which are connected to 12 vertebrae. Now, the entire axial skeleton, as the name indicates, forms the central axis of the skeleton. And upon that central axis, we connect the appendicular skeleton, the extremities, the upper extremities and the lower extremities. The upper extremities here start with the pectoral girdle, which consists of the clavicle or collarbone and the scapula, otherwise known as the shoulder blade. Now you can feel your clavicle right up here on the bottom of your neck, and you can feel your clavicle move when you move your arm, the job of the clavicle is to link the rib cage here to the scapula here. And um, the clavicle is the most frequently injured bone in the body. It's the most frequently fractured bone in the body. But the good news is that it heals very, very quickly. So Mother Nature knew what she was doing when she designed the blood supply of the clavicle here because that rich blood supply means that it can heal very quickly. Now connected to the pectoral girdle, you have the upper arm bone called the humerus right here. You can grab it right there. You can feel the bone underneath the muscle, the humerus. And there's a funny thing about the humerus here. If you feel the very bottom of your humerus here by your elbow, the inner part of your elbow, behind that is a spot which feels very sensitive. That's where you get that funny bone sensation. And what's happening there is that there's a nerve that passes directly behind that bump on the humerus. And if you hit that nerve just right, it sends the electrical sensation you know, down to your, to your hand. Now, if we move down to the forearm, the lower part of the arm here, we have two bones in here. These two bones, which you can see right here, are the radius here on the outer side and the ulna on the medial side. On yourself, the radius is going to be here, and the ulna is going to be here. And then uh, at the wrist itself, we have eight wrist bones called carpals. And then connected to the carpals, we have the hand bones called the metacarpals, which are connected to the finger bones, which are called the phalanges. So we have eight carpals here, five metacarpals, and 14 phalanges. I know we only have five fingers, but you have 14 finger bones, and that's because your thumb has two bones, two phalanges, and each of the other four fingers has 
three phalanges. Now let's go back to the wrist here for a moment. The eight carpals, you may be familiar with that name, carpal. You might have heard it in conjunction with a condition called carpal tunnel syndrome, which happens a lot in folks who work with computers. So massage therapists encounter a lot of uh, uh, clients who have that condition, the carpal tunnel syndrome. And the reason it has that name, it's a very painful condition, but uh, what's happening is that the eight carpals here actually do form a tunnel, which you may be able to see there uh, on the screen. But this is where the tunnel is. It's formed by the eight carpals, which are arranged just right to form a tunnel right here. And there's a nerve that goes through that tunnel. And that nerve goes into the hand and supplies the tissues of the hand. Now, the point is, when those bones go out of place, when they get misaligned, it can entrap that nerve and produce the, the pain and the numbness and tingling that is associated with carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, in the technique classes that we teach at Asha, the students do learn how to evaluate and how to treat carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, and that's why we do uh, a very thorough job of teaching that condition in the anatomy class so that the students can actually assess it uh, evaluate it and actually treat it uh, in technique class. So that's the upper extremity and then the lower extremity here starts with the hip bones which you can feel on yourself. When you put your hands on your hips right here you're putting your hands on the tops of the hip bones and then the hip bones are connected to the thigh bone right here. The thigh bone here is called the femur. Okay, it's, a, it's the biggest and strongest bone in the body. When people speak of their hip joint. This is the joint that we're talking about. It's the very top of the femur which fits into a cup uh, on, the, uh, on the hip bone. And that joint here, the, the hip joint, is where people often get a fractured hip. You know, older individuals sometimes get uh, a weakening of the bones, osteoporosis, which uh, leads to a fracture of the top of the femur, the, the neck of the femur as we call it, right here. Now, at the bottom of the femur, the femur connects with the two leg bones. The thigh bone is connected to the leg bones. And these two leg bones are called the tibia, which is this thicker bone here, and then the fibula, which is on the outer side, the thinner bone here. The knee joint itself is formed by the, by the tibia and the femur. Now, the knee joint is a clinically important joint. This is one of the most frequently injured joints in the body. So we take a very close look at it in anatomy class, and you'll also learn how to treat it in the technique class. Now the other thing about the knee joint is that in addition to learning its structure, we also learn how to assess the knee joint so that you can tell if the client might have torn ligaments or a torn cartilage in the knee. And then in your technique class, you'll learn certain techniques, you know, certain procedures to help person uh, who has uh, knee problems.